Welcome back, America. Hugh Hewitt live from the West Coast. Two days ago in the Washington Examiner, Beckett Adams had a column entitled, It's Time for the Press to Take Tom Cotton Seriously. We've been taking Senator Cotton seriously since 2010, so I'm a little bit ahead of the pack there. Good morning, Senator. How are you? Good morning, Hugh. Uh, I appreciate you taking me seriously. I don't take myself too seriously, but... uh, Good to be back on with you in the new year. Happy New Year to you and all your listeners. And to you and your family and Arkansans everywhere. Do Arkansans have a dog in the Georgia-Alabama tussle (laughs) last night? Um, Oh, different different people. uh, With whom I've spoken over the last week, we're rooting for different teams. Uh, Obviously, it was uh, exciting to have two SEC teams in there, an exciting game. Georgia really turned it on at the end. Well, you know, that ESPN mob got that arranged. Senator Cotton, let's talk about China, then Putin. Uh, First, there are reports this morning in the Financial Times and Reuters that COVID's long march across China has continued to within 60 miles of Beijing. Now they've locked down another city. That's the fifth city that they've locked down. Should American athletes be going? We don't even know what variety is. We can't trust them. Uh, Well, Hugh, I, I, a couple months ago, said that we should have a complete and total boycott of these games. Um, Last summer, I asked the Biden administration uh, what their plan was to protect our athletes, to protect them from uh, ubiquitous electronic surveillance, to protect them from DNA harvesting for part of um, China's massive DNA collection plans, to protect them from kidnapping and hostage taking. Um, And the Biden administration had months to develop a plan and to articulate it, they couldn't do so. So at the end of last year, I said that for the safety of our athletes, we should boycott these games. And in addition, we should boycott them because of Chinese crimes against the civilized world and its genocide against its own people. The rampaging COVID outbreaks across China are just another reason why these games should not proceed. This happened before, you remember. The Tokyo games were postponed from the summer of 2020 to the summer of 2021. If the summer games can be moved, given they are many times larger and more complicated than the winter games, surely the ma- the winter games can be delayed and then ultimately moved as well. At a minimum, would not our CDC demand an opportunity to examine on the ground, in situ, whatever it is that is rampaging its long march through China. Because I don't believe the Chinese Communist Party. Nobody should. Well, you shouldn't believe the Chinese Communist Party. They have lied repeatedly throughout this pandemic. They continue to lie today. But this is part of my um, concern about the Biden administration's lack of a plan. Um, They are basically at the Chinese Communist Party's um, that they are subject to the Chinese Communist Party's decisions on who they will let in. On basic security, Hugh, we mean like law enforcement officers who are there to keep our athletes safe in the Olympic Village. Um, and I'll just say that that is not adequate. Um, so there's certainly no chance the Chinese are going to let in scientists from our CDC or, or other agencies in the government, given how much they have worked to cover up um, the origins um, and the trajectory of this virus. Again, China has for, for two years said essentially they've had no COVID cases. Everyone knows, this, knows that's not the case. Um, everyone knows that the Omicron variant is uh, rampaging across China as it is across the rest of the world. China's vaccines are almost totally ineffective against it. So this is a very perilous situation to which we're putting our athletes. We shouldn't do it. In fact, the IOC shouldn't proceed with these games. They should not. Let me turn to uh, Russia. Yesterday, Deputy Secretary Sherman emerged from a meeting with her counterpart in Russia and announced that and floated that we are uh, considering suspending war games and reentering the INF. This is appeasement, in my view. Now, Admiral Stavridis and I had a a polite uh, disagreement. He says, if you don't give up territory, it's not appeasement. I think this is appeasement. What do you think, Senator Cotton? I, I think it is appeasement. Uh, Vladimir Putin is solely responsible for the crisis on Ukraine's borders. Uh, Vladimir Putin is also the reason why we have, for instance, a larger rotational troop presence conducting exercises in Poland and the Baltic countries. Remember, Hugh, that only started after he invaded 
and annex Crimea in 2014 and then continued to invade eastern Ukraine. There's a reason why the Poles and the Baltic states wanted more NATO troops conducting exercises on their territory. It was because of Vladimir Putin's behavior. Uh, the, Vlad- the, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, and it's furthermore, uh, it would be strategic folly of the highest order to reenter the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. Yes. So you remember, that was a treaty between the United States and Soviet Russia that said that we would not deploy Intermediate Range Russell missiles to Europe. We wouldn't even uh, manufacture them. Russia was violating that treaty by manufacturing intermediate range missiles. So we were the only country in the world that was willingly depriving ourselves uh, of this very potent strike capability. And the consequence of it was not seen in Europe, it was seen in the Pacific, where China has built thousands of missiles that can target Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, and Guam, and we had nothing. So re-entering the INF Treaty simply to get Vladimir Putin to pull back his troops in the Ukraine border would be a strategic folly of the first degree in the Pacific, where we need to build missiles and deploy them into the Western Pacific as fast as we can. But strategic folly is uh, under Secretary, Deputy Secretary Sherman's middle name. I mean, also, what do you want, Wendy? She, she went to Korea in 1994, and we got that terrible deal. She went to Iran as part of the team in 2016. We got JCPOA. She is in the business of giving away American national interest. Is she not? I mean, she's a nice person, but she is an appeasement person. It is. It is uh, a close competition between Wendy Sherman and Susan Rice of who is uh, more uh, closely uh, connected to every Democratic foreign policy debacle of the last 30 years. But you're right that she has been in the middle of almost every bad, weak, appeasing um, treaty or other agreement uh, over the last 30 years. Look, Vladimir Putin created this crisis. Uh, He created it from his actions over the last 15 years. He created it from his actions over the last three months. To enter into agreements like saying we would no longer deploy or even manufacture intermediate-range missiles, which are critical to deterring China, or that we will hang our NATO allies out and dry in countries like Poland, on Hungary and the Baltic states. In return for Vladimir Putin simply putting his tanks and personnel carriers in reverse, something that he can obviously then reverse again in six months, uh, would be deeply unwise. Um, Our policy should be simply that uh, we will uh, have massive, massive economic consequences for Russia should they invade Ukraine. Uh, um, that should start with in the United States Senate this week, by, by the way, Hugh, with Democrats voting, as they did for four years in the Trump era, to impose sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that sent Russian gas through the Baltic Sea to Germany. Uh, last question, Senator Cotton. Lots of Russian oligarchs. Yeah, I mean, if you go to London, you cannot not run into a Russian oligarch. Uh, they are everywhere in Europe. Ought they to be expelled? Ought their money to be disintermediated? And should we blink out some of Putin's money abroad, which we know where it is? Uh, Andrew Peek just confirmed that for me. So did Rick Grinnell. Before they do anything as kind of a shot across the bow so that they know we're serious, because this gang does not have a reputation for being serious. Yeah. um, So, Hugh, there's always good reasons uh, to try to sanction Uh, and claw back a lot of the ill-gotten gains of the gangster oligarchs who've surrounded the Putin regime for 20 years now. Uh, I think a shot across the bow might send the right signal. Um, Again, that's something that it's always called for, uh, given the uh, aggression of Putin uh, and his cronies against the United States, against our partners in the West, invading countries, um, assassinating uh, their uh, targets on our soil, Uh, interfering uh, with our democratic processes um, and so forth. Senator Tom Cotton, always a pleasure to speak with you, Senator. Happy New Year to you. And and I don't know that Arkansas football is coming back, but I hope we see you in a championship game before I go to heaven, which could, you know, you get, you got 30 years there, Senator. You got some time. (laughs) All right. Thank you.